Hi, we're on the uh, set of uh, Puddles of Life. This is our first video blog. Uh, in this first blog, we're going to go over time. Uh, in the old days, uh, 1920s, time was defined by the cameraman as he cranked the camera. And during the transition to sound, time was defined pretty much by the sound person. And a whole system developed around time that structured time in a, in a way. So we're going to do a field trip to, uh, a field trip to uh, downtown to some of the old movie uh, sets, uh, Mary Pickford's uh, set, and I uh, hope you have some fun. We're on the set of Rebecca of Sunnybrook Rook Farms, filmed around 1917. You're probably wondering what the heck is Puddles of Light? Vlog starting off at some 1917 film set. Well, in the old days, time was a was in the film industry was a lot different. I think the main reason why the film industry converted in the 30s wasn't because of sound, but because of the change in the processes of of time and how time was handled by the crews and the cameras and the systems. And the way film was done in 1910, really 19, 1907 to 1930, was a completely different, a more organic, more evolving uh, process. So you had Charlie Chaplin, um, uh, Fairbanks, uh, Buster Keaton, and a completely different film style and film development methodology. And um, Mary Pickford, in a certain way, she, she was managing Charlie Chaplin and also Fairbanks, you know, with the United Artists. She was kind of the Oprah of the day. Uh, she was an actor and also an executive producer of a very large studio. But basically, the people and the complications of, of managing sound in the 20s, you couldn't continue that into the 30s and the 40s. So that whole organic way of film development pretty much died. You had people like Jerry Lewis, Woody Allen, and Tita continue that tradition to some extent of an uh, organic way of, of filming. Uh, interesting enough, those are people that started off in comedy, and comedy is really critical to get the timing. But for the most extent, uh, the processes of the 1910s, 1930s were were dropped as sound came in. It had nothing really to do with voice. It had to do with how time was recorded, scripting of the time, and all those kind of things. So um, we're going to continue uh, this walk about and then go into modern time sequences and time codes and how the modern technologies are really allowing us to get back to the, that early uh, organic and certain way uh, more artsy approach to uh, filming. Hi, that was pretty cool. We actually met two people that had uh, direct experience with uh, silent film uh, when we were uh, walking downtown, which was pretty cool. Um, now we're going to go into some of these. Um, how time works in a modern set and how the camera was pretty much in sync with time recorders where the time recorder is is on one device and uh, it also records sound the time is sent to all the other devices which is pretty much the camera you can see it kind of moving around behind me and uh, actually time is also synchronized in this type of setup with the um, robotic controllers. So it's, uh, it, it's totally different than a traditional uh, timing uh, configuration. Um, and it allows a lot more freedom in a certain way as the camera becomes the, the primary actor or observer. Um, the nature of time shifts. So let's get into the actual devices of time on the set. Okay, this doohickey is this, this sound device. Um, 
this thing is the sound device controller. It sends the, the time out to this blue cable and it records sound coming in from these XLR cables coming off from the there. So it actually records sound. There's actually a disk drive in this thing. Also a little compact uh, thing. But then at the same time while it's recording sound, it's sending the time pulses out through this blue wire. Time pulses come out of the blue wire, and let me see if I can. And they go into this connector. This connector connects to the camera. That little, little yellow BNC is connecting to the camera. Say hi, camera. Yay. Anyway, and then that goes right into the back of the camera. So now the camera's time is synced, and if you could see on the camera screen. This time here has actually been generated by the time that it's coming from that device right there. With this type of system you can kind of see from this setup that it's actually one person that's running the camera, the time recorder that's over there, see it in this thing and uh, the actor this is me ah, this guy is kind of getting in my way um, which kind of makes it unique what we're going to do is we're going to take some of the, the the actually time recording out of the system and the recording media out from the, um, the sound device this guy's getting in my way Um, and we're going to bring that up to Adobe, um, which now is able to set, trivially integrate um, time codes. All right, so we got the um, sound on this little thing, and the video is on this. We moved it into the file system. Let's go over to that. Copy the files over to here's the wave file and here's the uh, video file. What I'm going to do is click on both of them, go to merge clips, click time code, click OK, creates a new file. Where you see that we're actually synced right now. You can see now that it's really easy to link um, sound with. Uh, video using time code. These no new programs, it just happens with just a couple of clicks. And there you go. So next uh, next blog we're going to go over 2.5D processing. It should be pretty interesting. So uh, have fun. Catch you around. Uh, hopefully this uh, will uh, show all synchronized.